In my previous video, I listed the 10 essential kitchen tools for beginner cooks. But now that you've got your basics covered, it's time to level up. Do you want to attack even more recipes with ease and confidence? What tools are worthy of taking up that precious real estate in your kitchen? If you want to know more about those kitchen tools that will make cooking easier, then keep on watching. What's up universe? It's Julie, your kitchen coach, and welcome back to our channel. In case you're new here, I'm a trained chef who's passionate about helping beginner cooks gain confidence in the kitchen. And in today's video, we're gonna tackle kind of like my tools 11 to 20, because I already mentioned one to 10 in this video. So go back and watch that if you haven't. These are still important, but maybe slightly overlooked or underrated, but they're so important for you to level up your cooking and make cooking so much easier. And this definitely gets overlooked as kind of like a fancy schmancy item, but especially if you're a baker or very serious about that, you need to get a kitchen scale. I happen to have this Salter brand. It's been with me for so many years and I like it, but the one that I'm recommending has a ton of great reviews and that's the Ozeri Pronto Digital Multifunction Kitchen and Food Scale. If you're marinating meats, the recipe will usually call for a certain pound for this ratio of marinade. And if you want it to be accurate and taste exactly the way that the writer intended it to, you have to measure it out. I weigh it out. Sometimes it's in the packaging, but for instance, if you're like trimming chicken down and you're taking away the wing tips, then if you originally have like three pounds of chicken, then you won't have three pounds of chicken total afterwards. You feel me? So what you wanna do is put like a bowl or a plate or something on this scale but after you put that on there, you wanna push tear, or in this case, zero. And that means that it'll equal it out, so it'll start at zero and it won't weigh the plate or the bowl too. Then you put your meat or whatever ingredients on top and then you can weigh it accurately. For this one, you can change it from grams to ounces, and I believe that most scales are like that too. It's also very important when you're doing baking because some recipes are very finicky. Like for instance, do you ever notice if you're trying to make macarons, macaroons, that they make you measure out that almond flour? They make you put it on a scale because that's the only way to get the accurate results. It can really make or break your recipe. So especially if you're just starting out, definitely invest in this. That way you'll know that you're getting accurate results. You need an oven thermometer. This one, I honestly don't even know the brand of this, but the one that I'm recommending is the Rubbermaid Instant Read Oven Thermometer. Sometimes it's really hard to rely on just your oven temperature alone because sometimes ovens are not calibrated, meaning that even if a recipe calls for 350 and you set your oven to 350, without you even knowing, sometimes it's 325, sometimes it's 400. It just happens. Now there are ways to calibrate it, and especially if you have a dial knob, it's actually easy to do that. But if it's not, like it's a digital screen, then you might have to have someone come in and repair that. But if you don't wanna do that, the best economical way to handle that is to just get one of these guys. They're very inexpensive. You just hang it onto, you know, like the little wire rack and then you just make sure that this is heated up properly for at least like 20 minutes to make sure it's reading the correct temperature. I use this all the time and for a while, I had a sneaking suspicion that my oven was not calibrated because a certain recipe just kept not coming out when I was testing it. But then when I got this, it really took away my guesswork because I was like, oh, it actually is calibrated. It's the recipe that's a little wonky. Likewise, I recommend this deep fry slash candy thermometer. This one is from Taylor, but I've had a couple different ones in the past and I really prefer this style. This is really secure and it hooks well onto the edge of your pot. And I like that you can slide it up and down. If you only have a little bit of oil, then you can just rest it like this and it'll still stand away from the bottom. When using these guys, you don't wanna have this touch the bottom of your pot. That's one thing you gotta make sure. It's gotta be a little bit elevated above it. And this part, the red part, has to be submerged in the oil. 
I personally never knew how precious and important having a deep fry thermometer was until I started doing more of this kind of stuff during my catering jobs. We had this thing called an underground supper club and one of our signature desserts were these beignet ice cream sandwiches. And I was in charge of making all the beignets for at least 10 people. They needed to be golden, puffy, and just right. So you had to make sure that, uh, that the oil was just right and there was no room for an error. Are you enjoying this video so far? please let me know and join our universe by pushing subscribe and hitting that bell for notifications so that you know when a next video like this one comes out. I don't want you to miss a thing. I highly recommend glass nesting bowls. Now you can use glass or stainless steel and they work just fine. They're both durable. And what I like about the glass is because we do a cooking show, I like that you can see through it and you can like show all the ingredients. It looks prettier and I feel like it looks like it saves space because it's clear. But these are not just normal glass. They're very durable. I mean, we bang these around. I use a hand mixer in these babies. We bump it around, use it in the dishwasher, and it's been lasting me for over a decade now. These are the Luminarch set of 10 glass nesting bowls. I love that all these little pieces are so important, even this little bitty baby one. I use this for mise en place when I'm putting it in like spices for our videos, and you can do that for your own cooking too. I've used literally every single bowl that's in here. The larger ones I use for like tossing salads and pastas and straining soups and whatever it is, but I also use it for mixing, like I mentioned before. So I have a couple of recipes like that. I probably use it for my no-bake Nutella cheesecakes. And most recently, I've been using one of these middle guys for a Dalgona coffee, especially in the summertime. That's like my go-to. You can also use these over a water bath. Like you just get a pot of simmering water and you place this on top and you put your chocolate in here and then you melt it properly. Hot foods go in there, cold foods go in there. You will never run out of reasons to use this. They're so durable. So you definitely need to use these for your everyday cooking. Handheld fine sieve strainers. I don't happen to have like a set of three, but the one that I'm recommending is a set of three. It's the Cuisinart Fine Sieve Stainless Steel Strainers set of three. These come in handy when straining out lumps in sauces and gravies, straining out stocks and soups, and even the little guy is useful for putting confectioner sugar over desserts. And I even used it recently in our Japaguri episode. Most of the times you'll see that I do that. I put the strainer and a glass nesting bowl and I nest this inside. And that way you can catch whatever juice or sauce or soup that's coming out of it and then either reserve what's on top or get rid of it. And when you want something silky smooth, you pair it with a rubber spatula. Remember I mentioned this guy in our last video? And then you just push it through the strainer and you'll see how silky smooth it comes out. If you get the set of three, you'll find that you'll have so many uses for them. I kind of wish I did, so I might upgrade and get them. I, I probably had this when I went to culinary school. What was that? 2007, right? 13 years ago. <gasps> oh my gosh, I'm aging myself, but that was 13 years ago, guys, and this has been holding up. Not only do you need the fine sieves, but you also need this spider strainer. Don't mind the junkiness. Again, this has probably been with me for about 10 years or so, and it's been through a lot. The other guys is more for straining, and this one is more for a functional tool. I use this especially for deep frying because it's so light. The handle is made out of bamboo. The one I'm recommending has great reviews, and it's the Helen Chen Bamboo Handle Spider Strainer. And it is used for a lot of Asian cooking, but Definitely you can use this for blanching vegetables in hot boiling water and just fishing them out. Or you also use it for a deep frying, that along with your deep fry thermometer. I use this again in my catering days or when we did our underground supper club with the beignets. I also use it for my toasted ravioli recipe. Leave the links down below for all the recipes mentioned. And I use it to flip them over so that they don't sink to the bottom. Then I also use it to nestle it out carefully and put it onto the tray. You will find so many uses for this, from blanching to steaming to flipping to frying. Remember to push like if you are enjoying these tips so far. Let me know also in the comments below if you own any of these tools. 
you're gonna need a box slash cheese grater. And a typical one has four sides, at least. Mine has about six, but I really only use about four of them. So whenever you're making mac and cheese or pizza, or lasagna, things like that, it's best to grate your own cheese because shredded cheese that comes from the store is coated in a cornstarch and then it won't really melt like that commercial cheese pull that you see on TV. So that's why you want a box grater. I also left a tip for you in our previous video, 10 ways to use lemons in your kitchen of how to clean your cheese grater. And not only do I use it for cheese, I've grated tomatoes, like fresh tomatoes on it to make a fresh tomato sauce, carrots and zucchini, like if you wanna make zucchini bread. And then with the carrots, I do that for my spaghetti squash with easy meat sauce recipe. So I'll leave that for you down below. When you grate the carrots like that, it kind of melts away into the sauce and makes it rich and aromatic and a lightly sweet without having chunks of carrot. Get yourself a meat mallet. This one, honestly, I think I might have just gotten this on a whim at Home Goods, And I'm actually okay with it, but there's something that I wanna upgrade to, and I recommend this one for you. It's the Norpro Meat Pounder. And you can tell in the picture that it looks different from this one. This one is supposed to have like the tenderizing section too, but I rarely use this side. The Norpro one is shaped at like this angle and it's more delicate so that you can handle pounding the meat without tearing it up and ripping it up. This one, you can get a little crazy and it can kind of tear it up. It is useful and necessary for making cutlets of chicken at an even thickness. I use this in my chicken with dill and tomatoes recipe where I make sure that the chicken breasts are all at even thickness. I just throw it into a Ziploc bag and then pound it. And you wanna use a light hand, not go crazy town. But making your meat thinner also cuts down on cooking time. So sometimes when I'm feeling like I want to cook something faster, like a bone-in pork chop, I just give it a tap all the way around so it's nice and thin, and then that baby cooks up so much faster. I love my salad spinner. And this is one of those things that you might be like, is it really worth having? The answer is yes. This is actually a wedding present. So if I'm really dating ourselves, this is probably, when did we get married? 13? 12. 12, <laughs> oops. 12 years ago. So it's a little bit like seen better days, but it still holds up. This is the OXO Good Grips Salad Spinner. If you're making salad, like whether it's a kale salad, like my kale cob salad, or my kale salad with garlic croutons, wet lettuce and wet greens make it really hard for salad dressings to adhere to it. So you wanna make sure it's kinda of like bone dry. And especially if you're gonna put lettuce or greens into a sandwich, you don't want soggy, wilted, greens in your sandwich. Not only that, but this can be used as a crisper. So if you have some washed and dried greens, just put it back in here, On keep this on top and put it in your fridge. It'll just kind of like act as its own little crisper. I like to pre-wash my herbs. So I wash all of them at once when I get home, spin them completely dry, and then I store them away. This has saved me so much time in our Thanksgiving cook with me videos. If you check out that series, you'll see me using it countless times from everything from herbs to greens. I would recommend even putting this on your wedding registry if you're gonna be a newlywed soon or you're newly engaged. Sidebar, if you guys are newly engaged or a newlywed, would you wanna know some recommendations for what to put on your wedding registry? I have so many ideas for that and I get a lot of questions for that too. So leave it in the comments below. Level up with a ricer. This is one of those things that I definitely didn't even invest in myself. This was given to me by my friend, who's also a chef. And I was like, oh, why do I need this thing? I don't even make a lot of potatoes or like mashed potatoes, but I found so many reasons to use this. And especially in that Thanksgiving cook with me series, you'll see that I use it so many times for making perfectly fluffy mashed potatoes and mashed sweet potatoes. And the best part is, is that you don't even have to peel the potatoes in advance. You just boil them with the skin on and you just rice it right through. The skin stays inside here. And then all of that fluffy golden goodness comes out of the bottom and it turns all soft. And you don't have to sit there mashing your potatoes afterwards. I just added the cream and butter and just stirred it right in. Not only that, but 
I used it for things like gnocchi. So one of our signature dishes in our underground supper club was this black sesame gnocchi with kind of this miso cream sauce. It was so good. Everyone loved it and raved about it, but that's what I used this handy ricer to get that consistent quality where it's light and not dense and super fluffy. I honestly don't know what brand this is because this was just gifted to me, but the one I'm recommending has great reviews. It's the OXO Good Grip Stainless Steel Potato Ricer. So don't strain your muscles doing all that mashing, especially if you're gonna do a lot of bulk cooking or if you tend to make a lot of mashed potatoes, this is definitely your tool of choice. Citrus squeezer, you all know how much I love my lemons. Okay, I don't discriminate. I love my lemons and my limes. I love citrus. So if you look at all of my like 200 some videos on this channel, you'll probably see me bust out this squeezer a lot. The one that I'm recommending for you has great reviews and it holds up. And this one is the Zule Citrus Squeezer. And it's so that you can squeeze both lemons and limes easily. I actually use both in this one. And again, I actually don't know the brand of this one. It's one of those things that I just happened to buy, but I've been using over time. I might upgrade to the Zule one because I've been eyeing that one for years. You just have to put the half cut piece of citrus in there and then squeeze it out. All of the seeds remain back in here. The pulp is in the peels and all you're left with is the juice. I use this in so many of my recipes, I can't even keep track, like my mussels and white wine sauce, Korean coleslaw, soba noodle salad. I probably use a citrus squeezer in the majority of my recipes. Bonus, here I go again, giving you the bonus. Now you guys are gonna expect it, but I really needed to include this. You definitely need a handheld mandolin. This one happens to still be in its package because I just got it. You can tell it's from OXO Good Grips. Well, first of all, I have a love relationship with this brand. Not sponsored, but should be. I usually use a Japanese mandolin. This guy has been with me forever. I just got it from like an Asian market. And I've used this in our catering events back in the day. And I use this to probably shave like, I don't even know how many pounds of cucumbers. The thing is that this was kind of hard to use and not that reliable. Like sometimes the cuts would be inconsistent. So I decided to upgrade recently. And this one has great reviews. Even if you look at the back of the packaging, you can see how many ways to hold it and use it. You can shave it right over the bowl onto your cutting board angled. So you can use this for potatoes. Like if you're gonna make a potato gratin and then you have your even thin slices. But not only that, Sometimes I like to julienne my vegetables by slicing them thinly first and then cutting them into matchsticks. That's kind of a method that I prefer. So if you're gonna do that, this is a way to set yourself up and do it quickly and efficiently. What I didn't mention in this video are other tools and equipment such as a rolling pin or a food processor. Those are all important, but they're in upcoming videos in a different roundup. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for notifications so that you know when those videos come out. And also let me know in the comments below if you own any of these tools that I think are also essential. And if not, which ones are you thinking of getting so that you can level up your cooking? Make sure that you watch our previous video and some of these other videos so that you can become more confident in the kitchen as well. Make sure that you push like if you liked it, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell. I'll see you next time. Bye.